Mr Hosey, people who work hard and save all their lives deserve to expect a decent income in retirement. And it's vital that the government supports pension saving, as well as providing a decent state pension. And I hope that today's debate will be a starting point as we try to discuss some of these issues. I would like to, first of all, however, put today's uh, debate into context. We are living through difficult and challenging times when families and pensioners face a cost of living crisis the likes of which has not been seen for 40 years. Food prices are up, fuel prices are up, and the overall cost of living is rising dramatically. And this is ha having an enormous impact on households across the country. And there is, as been, has been mentioned earlier, a real risk that some may either stop saving for a pension or, alternatively, may dip into their pension savings early in an unsustainable way, simply because they can't afford the cost of living at the present time. Mr Hosey, to make matters worse, the wider economic context is, to say the least, extremely challenging. The IMF reported last week that the UK faces the worst economic outlook of any major economy. After 12 years of economic mismanagement by this government, we seem to be stuck in a persistent period of low growth and high inflation. And as a result of this mismanagement, the government is now trying to cut public spending. It has reduced spending on the state pension by failing to increase pensions in line with inflation until April this year. And that means that uh, pensioners for some months have been trying to keep up with the huge increase in the cost of living, and they have been let down by the government in attempting to do that. Mr Hosey, saving for a pension takes time and regular contributions, and as we've seen, there needs to be an issue on pensions adequacy. I note the committee's report found that many savers did not realise they were not on track for the retirement they'd envisaged, and this, sadly, is a tragedy waiting to happen. I do hope the Minister will address this in her speech, and as, as I, I, I would like to uh, encourage her to focus on it, because ministers must do more to avoid, a, to avoid a terrible problem in the future, and they must do more to show that they're taking this issue seriously. Sadly, I'm not convinced that this point was adequately addressed in the government's response to the report, and I would hope that the minister will uh, find some time in her remarks to, uh, to discuss this more properly. Of course, saving for the future can only be sustainable if pensions are kept safe and increased pensions freedoms which were introduced in 2015 gave many people, many hundreds of thousands of people, the choice as to how to invest their savings. However, the government does need to do more to help them, including by providing better advice, as we've heard earlier, and also by helping to tackle fraud such as pension scams. I'm afraid, Mr Hosey, that the evidence so far is that ministers, unfortunately, are failing on both these counts. Not enough people, as we heard earlier, are accessing free and partial advice and it seems as though those with the largest pension pots may be somewhat more likely to, uh, to, to, require, to, to seek out that advice rather than those in the greatest need. On fraud, there are also some deeply worrying indications of the government's failure. In 2022, there was a 75% increase in online searches for scam help and a large increase in searches for pension scams. In 2018, FC, the FCA published data showing hundreds of people had been scammed out of their pensions, losing on average a, an enormous total of £82,000 per person. Research by the Money Advice Service suggests that there could be as many as eight scam calls every second, and Citizens Advice found that 8.4 million consumers had, be, had been offered unsolicited pensions advice um, between 2015 and 2016. On a similar note, we also need to make sure the regulator and the ombudsman are given the tools they need to take swift and effective action in cases of mis-selling or unethical behaviour. And the very serious ongoing problems with the British Steel Pension Scheme show the need to improve regulation. Much of the damage in this case could and indeed should have been avoided if tougher action had been taken at the time. I'm glad to say, however, that there are steps which can be taken. The law was changed in 2020 to ban cold calling um, from UK numbers, thanks to Labour pressure, and the government should now follow our calls to, to take further steps, indeed bon banning fraudulent online adverts, which remain an option for scammers. I would like to move on to talk more about the structures that exist to help people save, and as was mentioned earlier in the debate, auto-enrolment created by the last Labour government has become an undisputed, uh, undisputed success. We must maintain the ambitions of the last Labour government and do more to ensure that everyone benefits including, as colleagues across the House mentioned earlier, 
women, low-paid people and minority groups. And I would like to remind the Minister that the Government promised to look at expanding auto-enrolment by the mid-2020s, and I do hope she'll address this point when she speaks shortly. There are also, as colleagues indeed, I think the Member for Amber Valley and others mentioned, uh, scope for other innovations, and I would also urge the Government to look and think more creatively about new ways of encouraging saving. So, for example, looking at the issue of pension sidecars and indeed other ways of addressing uh, the wider challenge of encouraging saving, which we've heard so much about today. Mr Hosey, I am aware that time is somewhat limited, um, so I, I would like to just finish by urging the Minister to do more um, and to also point out the scope for pensions to uh, contribute to protecting the future of this planet. And I would like to welcome the work of my uh, right honourable friend, the Shadow Chancellor, and need her plans to support green start-ups and the links between those companies and pension funds. Thank you again, Mr Hosey, and I look forward to the Minister's response. Laura Trott, Minister. Thank you, Mr. Hosey, and it's a